So for this last grasshopper tutorial, what we're going to look at is how to differentiate the facade. Up till now, what we've been doing is essentially mapping uh, the identical unit across the facade. And what we'll look at here is ways in which we can vary um, its expression based on, say, orientation or some other uh, kind of attribute or relationship. So what we've got here is um, a kind of typical approach of what we've been doing up till now. In plan, you can see that it's the same unit uh, that's been instantiated across the facade. And here it's a, a kind of shading unit that has um, sort of a top and side shading device. Um, and I've set this up uh, in a few different ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect um, the typical slider, which is, um, this is how we've been working up till now, which just allows us to um, vary the the overall sort of depth of the of the unit that gets mapped on but what um, we can also do is have that depth vary based on the orientation of the panel so if I disconnect this one and instead connect in um, an, another approach and I'll go through how all of this is built what you can see in the plan is that uh, the panels that face directly south um, have a deeper uh, overall dimension and then as the facade curves around the ones that are facing west um, get shallower and so you can see the way that the facade ends up getting differentiated based on the orientation uh, another approach that we could do is to have a kind of a tractor in this case it's this point right here and you can see that um, the units that are closest to that point are shallower and then as they get further away from that point they become deeper so if I move that point around you can see the way that the expression of the facade starts to vary and in this case um, because it's based on a dimension of this point to the middle of the panel the panels that are higher up end up having um, more depth than the ones that are lower. So if I were to move that up in elevation, then that will reverse so that the ones that are lower will change. So I'll show how to do that. And then um, lastly, there's a, a kind of randomizer, uh, which just takes a random number, and then we'll use that to vary the overall depth of the panel. Uh, and you can hook up a slider bar, which will basically um, just seed a different kind of uh, random number generator. So those are the three techniques that we'll go over today in terms of how to approach differentiating this facade. So to do this, um, we'll start with uh, a situation that's pretty much what we've had up till now, what we, everybody should be comfortable doing, which is um, to create a grid on the facade, um, to apply a surface box, and then a box morph, and then use um, the box morph command to uh, essentially map or instantiate a component across that facade. So I'll leave, um, I'll leave all that um, behind and just kind of assume that, that everybody can get here now pretty easily and um, start to show some of these alternate approaches. So what I'm going to do is um, actually going to turn off the box morph, um, turn off our component for right now, and turn on the just the basic um, surface subdivisions. And the way that we would approach doing the um, the orientation like this the orientation approach would be to um, to think of creating a set of lines uh, that are what you might call normal to the surface um, and that once we get uh, those lines sort of varying in angle then we can have that angle determine the expression or extent of the, of the panel um, in terms of the the surface box and the box morph so the first trick is to think about how we're going to to find the normal coming off of this. And one approach that I'll show is 
So we can take an analytical approach. Within the, the surface menu, go under analysis and find the, it's called a BREP area, so boundary representation um, area command. We'll bring that in and we've got this surface and what we'll do is we'll feed that in and what it's going to do is it's going to feed out the area of, um, of each grid division uh, but it's also going to give us the, the area centroid, so the center point of each of those grid divisions. And that's a starting point. Um, to find the normal, to find the, the line that's coming off um, perpendicular from the surface, what we can do is we can then um, offset this surface. So let's do that under surface freeform offset. So we'll feed that in as our surface. Uh, for an offset distance, um, we can just set that to, I don't know, say 10. And you'll see how that pops out. And then we'll leave that. And what we can do is we can do the same area command to that surface. We'll switch that. So now what we've got, as you can see, is we've got a center point for the first set of grid divisions and then the center point for the offset grid divisions. And because there's a kind of numerical system that remains consistent from one surface to the next, the program will easily figure out if we want to connect the dots, which dots we're talking about. So what we'll do is we'll create a curve, just essentially create a line between these two. So we've got two sets of area centers. Um, we've got those and we've got those, and we can just feed those in as A and B. And so now, looking close, you can see that there's been a line drawn between all of those. So if we were going to let's turn off the preview on some of these. You can see that it's giving us the lines coming out normal from that surface. And this is starting to give us enough information um, to be able to determine the angle and then to allow that angle to feed in. But we still need a little bit more. Um, so starting with um, the origin point, what we'll do is we'll create a line that comes off of that in a consistent direction. So we'll have a kind of control line and then we'll have a variable line. So we'll do another line. In this case, we'll do what's called a line SDL. And we're going to give it the centers as a start point. And then we need to give it a direction. So we can go to vector, let's say x. Feed that in. And then we'll give it a length. And we can just input, I don't know, we can put in 10. So now what you can see is that we've got a relationship between two lines. A consistent, if we look at it in plan, we've got a consistent line coming in the x direction and then we've got a variable line that's coming off uh, depending on the orientation of the surface. And so what this does is this gives us enough information to where we can measure the angle between those two on a case-by-case -case basis and then we can feed that resultant in uh, and let that determine how deep the overall module is going to be panel by panel. So we'll cover that in the next one.